save your kisses Just pass them around You'll find my reason is larger I mean, my roots are definitely here. I mean, this is where we shopped. This is where, you know, I went to school. This is where I stayed every weekend until I was uh, in college. So I call Kinston home. Getting into the history and learning your neighborhood is, is as big a part as anything. I mean, Jesse Granger, he moved here and brought tobacco seeds. So he brought tobacco to the area. And Kinston was a huge, huge tobacco market at one time. If you had millions, what would they all mean? Queen Street is, is one mile long. Um, and everybody did come to Kinston to shop. I mean, this is where your your Belks and your Brodies and H Stadiums and all your uh, clothing stores and everything were right on the street. You even came downtown at that time to buy your cars. You know, all the car dealers were down here. Um, so you could come downtown and shop for anything you wanted. Who's bound to make you feel I remember a Kinston completely different than what it is now. And people from Goldsboro and Greenville and Wilson and Newburn all came to Kinston to shop because it's only 35, 40 miles from each one of those. We're in the center of everything. Kinston, Kinston's always been a, a musical town because we're strategically halfway between Miami and New York. So you would have people come through, you know, back in the 50s on their way to you know, New York or Florida, one or the other, and Kenston was just a, a, a perfect place for them to stop halfway. So they'd stop for a couple of nights and play in some of the old warehouses here. I mean, they used to, this was the first place that you know, people, bands played in. They played at a big warehouse, a tobacco warehouse. And, and back then, you know, it was like, you know, the blacks play over here in the, in the warehouse, and there would be about 10 bands over on the weekend. You know, so, it was just a good time when we were growing back up in the like, 60s, 70s. It was nice around here. Yes. We were just off the top of the head, this is us. Ooh, oh my, I gotta let you know I was a good man. But well, now I'm a bad man. I just be a good man. But well, now I'm a bad man. Kinston's a small community. Everybody pretty much knows everybody, and um, it's had its issues. But I think we're on the mend. I really do. And and we've we've been blessed to feed so so many people. I was born in Kinston, right downtown. My father had a TV store, appliances, records, eight tracks next door, called Green's TV. So I was raised in the downtown area from the beginning of time. So it's, um, I saw it when it was heyday when it was flourishing and I've seen it at the bottom. When tobacco left, all your tobacco moved out. Your textiles moved offshore, China, Mexico, so you didn't have the shirt factories and these people didn't have jobs. I mean, everybody's got their issues. Um, every community, I mean, we're not gonna be a Greenville. You got 1,800 doctors over there, Pitt Hospital. We're not gonna be a Durham. You got Duke University and Duke Hospital. I can't, but we can carve our own niche out, bring people in off Highway 70, potentially going to Newburn or to the coast. And, you know, they spend a couple of days in Kinston on their way down. Some appeal to them about the community. But um, it's been quite fun. It really has. I had a good time doing it in my life. You know, of course, my father worked with me up until about 17 years ago. And now my son's here, so 
at the end of the day, it's an egg. They can eat your egg or they can eat somebody else's egg. But if you provide a clean, safe, reasonable environment, they'll come eat your egg. There are so many businesses and people in this community that have just been here the whole time doing their thing, you know. There has definitely been an ebb and flow of, of folks moving in and out of the community for various reasons. But, you know, when you see like a shop like this, you know that probably in 1989 these folks were here, you know, doing their auto shop business and no one was living in these homes around here and it was just a, a, a ghost town of a neighborhood but there were still people here doing things. So um, I'm not too familiar with these guys right here or a lot of people in the neighborhood that have sort of stuck around but um, it's cool because you still get a little, a little look into like, hey, there was, there's been things going on here. Everyone didn't abandon the town. Mother Earth, if you, had, if you had seen this building that was here before, it, it was the ugliest building in town. It really, really was. And by putting Mother Earth here and changing, you know, changing the way the building looked and taking it back to its original look as much as we possibly could, it put a beautiful beacon right on the corner that everybody can see. Um, it made a lot of people proud. You know, it now makes people very proud to say that they're from Kinston. They'll say, well, I was in Greensboro, and, and somebody asked me where I was from, and I said, Kinston, and they go, oh, Mother Earth's down there. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Oh, Mother Earth made a huge difference in the downtown area. And now we're starting to see, you know, downtown didn't get in the shape it's in overnight, and it's not gonna resurrect itself overnight. It's an improvement to the area. And overall, it's, it's, it's something, again, I will, and I say that I go five years ago, back when I would leave out of here, to nobody on this side of North Street to go walking out now and seeing, going to my car, and I look back and see cars, uh, you know, and then, you know, you got the, the Red Room Tavern with the red sign up, and you see all this, and say, okay, it's, it's really happening. And sometimes, nights nice, I get off and ride through, you look like you actually going through, let's say, downtown Durham, and how it looks at nighttime. Yeah. Since Mother Earth has, has opened, um, the sense of community and, and the pride is just overwhelming. I mean, you know, and the people are just people are very happy about what they see and, and they, they, uh, they have pride in their, in their town again. It's, it's great. Back in Prohibition, uh, certain towns were allowed by law to have a dispensary for medicinal purposes. So the Kinston dispensary was across the street. My business is putting people on the highway and we certainly don't need more any more drinking drivers than we already have. I'm going to vote no. I'm opposed to liquor by the drink because I've lived in Atlanta and I don't want a bar on every street corner in our town. So I'm going to vote no. My mother stayed home. Uh, she was at home mom. She's very religious. I mean, this is, she's never had a drop of alcohol in her life. So, so when I told her I was going to start a brewery, I, um, she prayed for me. So, but everybody needs prayer, so that's good. But, she, but he, I will tell you a funny story because she used to come to Kinston to get her hair fixed every, twice a week. And my office is upstairs and I was looking out the window one day and there, she rode by and she was looking. So she's never been in here, but she did, she did come by and, and look several times. So she's proud of me. Although she probably doesn't agree with the product that we make, but oh well. Can't have everything. <laughs> so, but how's it, how else has it changed Kinston? Well, it gave us the renovation bug. So Mother Earth started, we renovated this building, and I guess we just didn't stop. So now we've renovated uh, two more buildings for where there's uh, two restaurants now. Uh, it is the Waller Room Oyster Bar, and the other one is on Ginger 108 Asian Grill. So those two. And then, from our rooftop deck upstairs, we have an employee deck. And 
off to the uh, west, you can see a neighborhood, and there was a house boarded up, and it just was an eyesore. So what did we do? We went over and, and bought the, uh, the house and remodeled it, which started a whole renovation of a whole neighborhood. There are about 70 homes in there. We have about 22 so far. Uh, we're renovating the homes for artists to move to Kinston and live and show their wares. The city is working with us um, hand in hand. They've uh, deemed it a uh, arts district, arts and cultural district. So that means that you can live and work and show your wares in your home. We've got a waiting line for people that want to move into them. So it's, it's a great thing. Um, we, we have glass blower that lives there. We have musicians that live in the uh, neighborhood, uh, welders, carpenters. So we've got a little bit of everything so far. Uh, we're looking to hire a recruiter to recruit artists from the, you know, outside of Kinston to move here. Um, and hopefully that will change Kinston even more. Well, I came here from Madison, Wisconsin, um, where I lived for a while, but I grew up for 26 years from the time I was born until the time that I moved to Madison, it was 26 years. And the gentrification that's happening here is, it's pretty awesome. Um, the gentrification that happened in LA when I lived there was, um, it was very necessary and I'm very glad it happened. I guess I was just in a different place in my life being a child and so forth. Um, that by the time I was an adult, I couldn't really take, I couldn't really afford to live in the gentrified areas because they were so cool and hip at the time and they were so nicely redone um, that everybody with a, a lot of money wanted to live there. Um, so my experience with gentrification has been I, I'm always 100% behind it because they take a dilapidated area that's no longer useful in most people's eyes and, and refurbish it to what it was. But you have to be careful with gentrification because you can easily exclude people. Um, you can make it a very exclusive thing that only the very wealthy or, you know, the very hip that are willing to be poor to live there can be a part of. But I really don't see that happening here. I see. Um, gentrification that involves a community happening here and people that you know are welcome to take part of it and it's making making homes and neighborhoods for people who work in the service industry here people who want to create art people who want to um, just be a part of something positive happening kind of out of the ruins of something very negative happening which was sort of what I understand to be the decline of this town when all the industry left. And it's amazing to see people getting behind a movement to restore these neighborhoods, create jobs, um, create nice affordable housing for the people doing those jobs, and mainly trying to create an artistic community here. That's a lot of the driving force behind this is trying to create an art community somewhere where there's absolutely no art community. But this is what we do the first hour or so is run around and clean things and try and make sure we're okay to do the rest of the day. I love this place, man. This, is, this has been really fun. What's it like to perform here when you work here? Uh, interesting, I guess. Yeah, it's like a different mindset, I guess, because I, I like halfway want to help out over here, but I'm like, no, I'm, I'm time out, time out. Can't do it. Not tonight, not tonight. Um, like, I love the whole community down here, everything. Um, like, and the whole, like, uh, like the, the restaurant like worker scene and stuff, whenever they like come here after like it closes and what like their restaurants close and stuff. Um, like it's almost like a real It's just yeah, community. it's like a it's like it's like a close knit community and it's really cool. Like because you you can like you know you can go anywhere and like you know everyone and they're all just super nice and like I just I wanna see like 
This place is on to bigger and better things, man. Like the like the motto is, we're on the way, <laughs> right? Certainly. How long have you lived here? Four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. What do you think about what's going on? Uh, well, I mean, it, it's a lot better than it was when I first moved here. Uh, they, it's just up and coming. I see within the next couple of years, it's going to just expand exponentially. You want to see my glass up, Karen? Where I do all my work, and I was fortunate enough to um, be given the opportunity to have a workspace. And the person who gave it to me to use was is one of the largest supporters in the arts in North Carolina, as far as I'm concerned. But um, now who's that? Stephen Hill, of course. Man, guy's the man when it comes to supporting anything positive. He does everything to do with art, and that's really, to me, it's been. Um, it's been one of the best experiences of my life knowing him because I've never seen somebody give more selflessly to a community than, than that guy. I go in and buy them, not all of them, but I go in and buy the ones that I want um, at the very beginning of the show. Um, but some of these buildings actually don't exist anymore. They just hold a lot of sentimental value. Those are my three daughters. Um, it's, it's Caroline, my oldest, Claire, my middle, and Abby, my youngest. And they were, this is when they were four years old. He totally captured their spirit. It's uh, quite amazing. We've since purchased all the buildings behind us um, so we can expand the brewery that way. We have this new red top building here too. It's, uh, it's an awesome build. Awesome architecture on it. This end has a square, square top. And that end has a curved top. So it's just beautifully, beautiful architecture. And we have over here the top, second tallest building in Kenston. You see where the windows are being taken out. That is, that's um, the new residence. It's going to be uh, quite cool. And you're going to be on the top deck, right? The top floor. The, the top floor is going to be the my offices, and then the fourth floor is my residence, and then below that, on the uh, second and third floor, are other rooms. So, yep. It's exciting. It is exciting, and there'll be a rooftop deck on it. So I'm really looking forward to it. And who would even think? That's not, that's not fake. That's real stone. That's been carved into this. I mean, it's just... The ceiling. Yeah, there are 40 of those up there. The best calculation that I can give you is um, I have a company that I deal with that, do, that does this type of stuff. And they do it on a much, much smaller scale. So the, the cheapest that I could even imagine this ceiling being would be a, a quarter of a million dollars. At least. <laughs> it's just phenomenal. Uh, so this will be the lobby. I have um, my daughter's portraits will go on the wall. They can get it back working. So it will be a working vault. Haven't decided if we're gonna put a little lounge in there yet and call it the vault or, or if um or if, I don't know. But, you know, sky's the limit I guess. And believe it or not, this will be ready in six weeks. How how do you feel about having transformed like a lot of the buildings in this town that's 
like your own from the very past? Um, how do I feel? Well, I feel um, I feel good about it, but, but I wish that somebody would come and take the same initiative and get on the same wavelength and help also. I mean, we're not help, but I mean, come in and, and do their own thing too. I mean, I can't, I can't do every building in downtown Kansas. Joe moved here. He's from LA. Um, you have Matthew, who is, head, who is our head brewer, who moved here. He's, he came from Boston. And then you have our brewmaster, Josh, who came from Chicago. Um, I mean, Kinston is a very different place for them. But I'll say that I think they're very happy here. I think that Kinston gives them things at a different level than they were used to. They're seeing something from the ground up instead of just going in somewhere that's already been done. When I got here, there was racial tension. I'll just say it. Um, people were like, all right, is this, are these, are these businesses and these positive things happening? Is this only for like the white community? Is this only for people who have money? Um, all kinds of racial and economic lines started being brought up and you know brought into light. I think as time goes on, everyone realizes that um, this is just a Kinston community thing. And I've definitely been stereotyped myself and my friends and what we're doing. Um, and we've definitely been welcomed in. Yeah, the, the first house that was finished in this new development of the Mitcheltown area is 313 West Blunt Street. Um, and it was, a, it was a joy to stay there. It, it was quite an unfinished place. And uh, we got into some very interesting awesomeness with all of our neighbors at the time. Um, <laughs> whether it was cookouts or, you know, just having them buy. They love to give gardening tips. We had like a small community garden. <laughs> Um, about a block and a half from our house, and uh, yeah, I've, I've actually I actually learned more than I thought I would living in a place like that. That's like totally, um, it's an active redevelopment, man. It's not it's not gentrification. It's not like a, anything else I've ever seen. I used to live in New York um, when Brooklyn was going through its heyday. Um, when Williamsburg was like a you know a tiny dot on the map. And uh, now look at it. This hopefully will not be like that. Um, this was a pretty cool corner to live on. I enjoyed it for about two years. But yeah, this is the uh, your, this is the house that kicked off the whole Smart Kinston gentrification. Three thirteen. I was never once worried about um, my neighbors. They they were all very very friendly. They'd always come by and chat us up. We we're, we're good friends. Um, so I've made a lot of close allies and friends in that way. Um, I'm just glad that it's happening in a way that um, you know doesn't doesn't extricate certain cats. So yeah. I'm pleased to be a part of a movement like that. Um, now I live around the corner, um, and I have a a pretty decent view of Kenson and it's really fun to watch it change. I live across the hall from Joseph uh, in that greenhouse. But yeah, slowly but surely, and, and now he's got probably 18, 20 houses that are like, were basically like <laughs> complete squalor, like rubble, and they're now livable abodes. So it's nice to see people coming back downtown and that's really helping revive this whole movement. We've had uh, so many people welcome, welcome us into their homes, into their bands, into their families. Um, I think people are coming together, you know, over food, booze, and music. <laughs> I think that's that's generally what's happening at the moment, but um, as this thing grows and gets legs under it, we're unifying the community. There's always going to be people who are going to want to pick one side of the fence or the other, but everybody who's interested in um, just having a better, better community has definitely been definitely been making it known that they're going to come out and hang out with everybody no matter what, no matter how their economic status, their race, their age. Uh, we've been crossing all those lines ever since starting this project, so I guess it's just like anywhere else in America, honestly. Don't save your kisses, just pass.
pass them around You'll find my reason is logically sound Who's gonna know that you pass them around A hundred years from today Why crave a penthouse that's fit for a queen? You're near heaven on Mother Earth's green. If you had millions, what would they all mean? A hundred years from today. So last. Make love a thing Be happy while you may There's always one Beneath the sun Who's bound to make you feel shining and that's a good sign cling to me closer and say 